What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. On today's video, we're going to be covering something that was kind of discussed in the anime, but never actually happened. Before the Tournament of Power, Elder Kai told Goku that he should get his potential unlocked. Sadly though, they didn't have enough time. And not to mention, Vegeta was in the time chamber so they couldn't even use that. And I think that pretty much gives the background that's needed here. Today we're going to be looking at what would happen if Goku actually got his potential unlocked before the Tournament of Power. Something that could have realistically happened if they were smarter with their time. As with every video, let's set a like goal. This time, let's do 3,000 likes. It lets me know you guys like content like this and want to see more like it. Anyways, let's begin the story. So this is actually pretty simple to fit in. Obviously, it's going to happen before the Tournament of Power. And Elder Kai brings it up to Goku like he does normally. Except he actually does it earlier on like he should have. I don't know why he brought it up so late, but hey, if he did bring it up earlier, we wouldn't be doing this video today. So thank you for the video idea, Elder Kai. We'll rewind a bit. Around the time after the exhibition match. They're trying to figure out how to come up with a strong team, and Elder Kai mentions that he can unlock Goku's potential, making them a lot stronger by default just by making Goku stronger. Oh yeah, that's an awesome idea, although it is going to take a day out of his time and he does need to recruit people. Well, maybe he can get someone else to recruit people, but that doesn't even matter. They remember the room of spirit in time, and that's actually perfect. They need about a day or so to unlock Goku's potential, and if they go in the room of spirit in time, that day turns into a few minutes. It won't cut their time short, and they'll be able to get in there before Vegeta gets in there. Oh, well, that's simple enough, so they decide to go with that. Goku doesn't really want strength gifted to him this way, but with the universe on the line, it is the best idea. And who knows, even though he doesn't really like the idea of being gifted power, he'll still be getting stronger and he is interested to see where it goes. Elder Kai is brought to the lookout and the two of them go in the Room of Spirit in Time. And the rest is pretty self-explanatory, while in the Room of Spirit in Time, the ritual is done. And a few minutes later, Mr. Popo and Dende see the two of them walk out. They actually stayed in there a little bit longer than they needed to, about a day extra just so Goku could use the power some more, but he's still not really quite used to it. He's seen it with Gohan and how potent it was with him, and it was pretty potent with Goku, but it's just weird. I mean, he's used to transforming, and this is similar to powering up into Super Saiyan, but like Elder Kai said, that's all this useless fanfare. No hair colors are needed here, and Goku just looks like Goku. The good thing is now he has to actually recruit people, which means he'll get some nice sparring matches in, and he'll get more ways to test his power now. He learns how great his power is at first when he fights Krillin, he knew he was way stronger than a 4, but he has to heavily hold back. He's not aware of his own strength, and this ultimate form that he has is actually way stronger than anything else he has. Gohan's quick to pick up on it too. It's interesting to see that Goku has the same exact form as him, and from his experience, he knows that it'll be pretty useful, especially in the hands of someone like Goku. This comes up again later on in his fight with Gohan. Goku's glad to see how strong Gohan's grown. But even more so, Gohan's surprised to see how strong Goku is. He knew about Blue and everything beforehand, but in this ultimate form alone, He's way more powerful than he would have ever expected. And Goku does try to use his Super Saiyan forms during fighting, but there's no need. So I made a video about this before talking about Ultimate, and I've mentioned this in a few other what ifs that I've made. But let me give a brief rundown of Ultimate here. When Elder Kai unlocked Gohan's potential, he didn't need any other Super Saiyan forms. For lack of a better word, Ultimate is simply the most ultimate form you could have. Basically what it's doing is drawing out all of your latent potential. So even if you have transformations, that doesn't matter. Ultimate already draws out the power from those transformations. And another huge upside to Ultimate is that it doesn't have any stamina drain. At least it's never been shown to have any. Unlike something like Super Saiyan Blue that's been shown to be very draining if you use it for too long. But Gohan never showed any signs of wear while using it. Both in Z and Super. If you want more info about this, I'll link the video above. I recommend watching it if you haven't already because it gives a lot of info about what Ultimate truly is like. And besides it being a shameless self-plug, it'll give you context to how strong Ultimate truly is. Especially when given to someone like Goku, it's way more potent than you'd probably expect and we'll be seeing more of that in this scenario. The same happens with Goku's fight with Frieza. Frieza thinks that Goku's just holding back and trying to toy with him, but Goku's not in his base form. He's in ultimate while fighting. And obviously he's able to defeat Frieza in their little sparring match without him getting knocked out himself. Beerus and Whis are pretty impressed. Once again, Goku's broken his limits, but by very unconventional means this time. But they warn him, don't get too cocky with his power. Sure, it's really strong, but if it gets to his head, it's not gonna end well. And Goku knows this. The great thing is with all the recruitment, he's gotten used to the power by now, being able to fight with it at all, and he knows where he is in terms of strength. One of the best parts is he doesn't need to use his Super Saiyan forms anymore like I mentioned, which means it's going to be a lot more conservative with stamina. Obviously his stamina is going to drain like normal, but it'll be so much better at conserving energy as opposed to something like Super Saiyan Blue, or regular Super Saiyan even. It's basically like he ascended past Super Saiyan Blue, but without any of the downsides of Blue. It's incredible, and as he fights he grows even stronger with that. It's a snowball effect. And the tournament's only going to help him grow even stronger than that. And now, the tournament itself begins. So at the start, not really much would change. 
Vegeta actually gets to witness Ultimate firsthand. Well, he saw it with Gohan, obviously, but with Goku this time now. Kakarot seems so strong yet so calm. Goku was still a bit wary about it because he didn't want to be gifted power like this, but he knew it was necessary to win the tournament. But Vegeta doesn't care. He'll get power in his own way. He doesn't need that same silly ritual that Kakarot got. But still, he does have to admit, it's impressive to see Kakarot fighting like this. Since a lot of the first few matchups are between fodder fighters, I mean, not much is really going to change. Goku's going to defeat them regardless of having ultimate or not. The only real big difference here is that Goku is a lot more conservative with stamina like I mentioned. People like the trio of danger, well, he can go in full power in ultimate and not really use too much energy, so he can basically one-shot them with little effort. Although there is one point where he uses Super Saiyan, which is a huge downgrade in terms of power, but he uses it against Caulifla just to show her. Although once Kale gets enraged, he goes back into ultimate and defeats her. Jiren never intervenes, and Goku's actually the one to take her out. And while he would love to fight her, he tosses Kale out of the ring because he deems her as too dangerous to actually fight. And he does have some fun training with Caulifla, but more so he's interested in the other strong fighters, specifically that one guy from Universe 11, Jiren. There is also Topa who we fought before, and he would love to have a nice little rematch with him, but besides that, he's focused purely on Jiren. And inevitably, this does lead him to fighting Jiren. He could go all out right from the start, but he decides to pace himself, and not by using Super Saiyan forms, but rather by using ultimate at different levels. First, he starts with about 10% of his power, then he cranks it up to 20%, then 50 and Jiren's pretty surprised. This warrior from the 7th actually has a lot of potential within him. It seems he draws out more power as he fights, and Jiren's actually curious to see where his limit is. And right off the bat, this is way more effective than when Goku was using Super Saiyan Blue Cow Ken versus Jiren. Besides being much less strenuous, the power is still there. But then Goku realizes something. He could power himself up even more, beyond just ultimate. He sees it as a trump card though, because he's not sure if he's necessarily going to need it. We'll see some of that in a bit. Goku powers up more against Jiren, using all of his power, and Jiren's actually feeling a bit of pushback. It isn't enough to concern him, but enough to surprise him. Goku is actually dealing damage to him. And besides that trump card that I just mentioned, there is another trump card that he's going to use right now, the Spirit Bomb. Once he actually charges this up and throws it at Jiren, it gives him way more trouble than it did in the actual story. Goku's able to actually push it far enough back to the point where it actually hurts Jiren. But as Jiren powers up more himself, he's able to push it back and deflect it successfully. And this leads to the usual Ultra Instinct stuff, but with Goku being stronger, this does affect the fight as well. Not enough for him to win right now, but enough to actually give Jiren a bit of a challenge. Goku's not too sure what that was, but he knows Jiren is the real deal. He's gonna have to break out what he actually had in mind, although he needs some time to recover first. Ultra Instinct took a lot out of him. Luckily, Frieza lended him some energy, but now he has to wait a bit to heal up. He eventually has a rematch with Caulifla, although it doesn't really amount to much since Kale's not there. He's able to help her get a better grasp on Super Saiyan 2, but inevitably knocks her out of the ring. And this fight gives him something to do instead of just sitting around restoring his stamina. But now he feels he's actually ready to fight Jiren again. Vegeta joins him this time, unlocking his own new form, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. And as for Goku, he pulls out that trick that he had up his sleeve. I mentioned a lot in this video that Ultimate has no strength. It's basically like being in your base form. And that gives Goku a good opportunity. He could stack Kyle Ken on top of it. Sure, Kaioken is pretty stressful to use, but it's not like he's using another form alongside it. This is essentially like using Kaioken in his base. It also doesn't look that different either, I mean, it's just Kaioken with normal Goku. But even though it looks like the familiar Kaioken, it's way different. The potency of these two techniques combined is insane. Plus, Goku's already stronger after using Ultra Instinct, as we saw in the original story. So that's three boosts on top of each other. He has Ultimate, the boost in power after Ultra Instinct, and now Kaioken on top of all of that. He's ready to defeat Jiren here and now. Goku and Vegeta work together, and they actually push Jiren really far. He's still suppressed a bit, but he knows he needs to let out more energy. He's not going to let these two get the best of him. He starts powering up more and more, and Goku responds with the same, going to higher levels of Kaioken. Up to times 20 even. The fight continues, and Jiren is eventually backed into a corner. Topo and Dispo want to see if he needs any help, but he tells him not to intervene. He'll handle this himself. These two will fail to surpass him. Jiren begins powering up, going to his full power mode. He could have held back some more, but he'd rather use this as a show of force. Now powered up, none of Vegeta's attacks affect him, and Goku can't manage to do anything either. The other universes see this and are pretty threatened by it, including Universe 3. They decide to break out Aniraza right away. Maybe they can wipe out these three fighters all at once if they fuse. And just as quickly as Aniraza is brought in, he's defeated. He aims for Jiren and Dispo and Topo try to protect him. Dispo ends up getting eliminated by him while Topo takes a lot of damage but barely manages to stay in. But they're not even Aniraza's main target, that's Jiren. And it's a pretty big mistake to target Jiren. A single attack from Jiren is able to knock him out, but this actually served as a good distraction. Goku and Vegeta begin attacking him again, getting a few good hits in, but not dealing enough damage. 
The two of them aren't going to give up though, and for all they know, maybe Goku can access that same power again. And as they face Jiren, he feels something from behind. Lasers are shot at his back by Frieza. Jiren turns around and blinks, swatting them away. But then from each side he gets attacked again. Gohan's there on one side with Piccolo on another. He tries to attack them, but then two fighters jump past him really quickly. It's 17 and 18. Consider where we are at this point. There's only a few other fighters left in the ring besides Universe 7 and Jiren. Universe 6, 4, and 2 have some fighters left, but they're all in battles with each other, which means Universe 7 is free to attack Jiren. All of the remaining fighters are fighting against him now. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Frieza, and the androids. Goku's pretty worn out, but someone else decides to help. Piccolo grabs onto Goku, transferring a bunch of energy to him. It's not enough to completely restore Goku, but enough to heal him quite a bit. Not only granting a little boost in power, but reinvigorating him enough to keep using Kaioken. This basically puts Piccolo out of commission, but it's a good enough sacrifice. Goku will go past his limits at any cost, even if he can't use that Ultra Instinct thing again. He knows how to defeat Jiren. He jumps back into the fight as Jiren tries to fight off all the other fighters of Universe 7. Of course, they don't do much damage to him, but they're more than enough to annoy him and actually get him off guard at times. 17 then traps Jiren in a bunch of barriers, and this gives Goku a little bit of an opportunity. Jiren's quickly breaking out of them, but he's effectively stunned for a few seconds, and this is just what Goku needs. Quickly, he charges a Kamehameha, but this one's different. He powers up into Kaioken while using it, with Ultimate activated as well, of course. The Kaioken keeps multiplying, times 10, times 20, times 40, and Goku then shouts, times 100. He can only use this for a brief second, and this is just that second he needed. Jiren breaks the last barrier and tries to attack 17, but then hears Goku behind him, and it's already too late. The blast makes contact with him. He pushes up against it, trying to push it back, as once again, he's attacked from each side by all the other fighters. They slowly move in towards Goku. Instead of surrounding Jiren, they join Goku as he pushes Jiren off. Jiren is able to push it back a bit, but there's an issue. This attack is so potent that it's breaking the ring below him and it's already too late, they give one last push. And Jiren is defeated, knocking to the void. With this attack, Goku basically put himself out of commission for the rest of the tournament. He'll need to rest up quite a bit, but it doesn't really matter. The rest of the team will take care of it for him. It's not like there's many fighters left anyways. They clean up the rest, and the tournament is over, with Goku being declared the MVP. And as I usually do when Goku wins the tournament in my scenarios, he's gonna wish for all the universes back. It's pretty in line with what Goku would want. He'd want to fight all these strong people from the other universes again. Plus, it's the most sensible wish. I mean, their universe is partially responsible for killing every other universe, so he might as well bring them back. And that's the tournament of power covered. So what happens next? Well, obviously the Broly movie would happen. And since that's basically just one big fight, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Goku's getting more and more used to Ultimate. Vegeta ends up fighting Broly like normal, but then once Goku comes in, it's a pretty one-sided match. Even with how fast Broly's growing, Goku shows Broly his own growth. And the fight actually ends prematurely as Goku defeats him in Ultimate. Frieza's pretty pissed and he tries to jump in to defeat him himself, but Goku fends off all Frieza's attacks with ease. With Vegeta then coming in finishing the job, killing Frieza like he always wanted. And what do Broly and Paragus do? Well, they're not gonna stay on Earth. The best option for them is just to take Frieza's ship and go back to Vampa. Well, that was a pretty weird experience. Goku and Vegeta were pretty surprised at that Saiyan's power, and they would like to see him once again. But more importantly, they got rid of Frieza just like they wanted. And it makes Vegeta pretty happy that he was the one to do it. Of course, Goku says he could have done it himself, but Vegeta tells him too bad, he was the one to do it. Not only is it revenge against Frieza, but also Vegeta feels his revenge to Kakarot as well because he did steal the kill on Frieza in Resurrection F. Vegeta gets the last laugh here, and he didn't hesitate. Following this would be the Moro arc. And by this point, Goku's grown incredibly strong. He keeps training with Ultimate and has no need to train with Super Saiyan Blue anymore. Sure, it's nice to use here and there, but besides that, he's usually an Ultimate when he's training with Whis. He does want to try and access that Ultra Instinct thing again, but he's not really too sure how to. I mean, he only got Ultra Instinct Omen, and he only used it once. It's not like in the original series where he was able to use it twice and then get the true Ultra Instinct. He's still working towards it and does want to get it, but besides that, he's just focused on his regular power by this point. And luckily, there's another good test right in front of him. That's Moro. The arc starts normally enough, but things get really different once we get to Namek. And I believe that Ultimate would really help in the fight against Moro. Sure, Moro could still steal his energy, but Goku's not going to be giving off too much energy while in this form. He can regulate it pretty easily, and with how strong he is, he's so far ahead of Moro that even if Moro tries to take some energy, it's not going to be that big of a deal because Goku can end it quickly. He would prefer to enjoy a fight with Moro because he seems pretty strong, but Moro's not fighting fair, so Goku's just going to end it as quickly as possible, defeating Moro as he's then sent back to the Galactic Patrol prison. I would go into the Granola arc, but obviously there's not really much for that yet. But I will leave you with a question. Do you think Goku would get Ultra Instinct by this point? 
He's had enough training and he did have that one experience with it, but ever since the tournament power, he was never really pushed to that same limit again. I'll leave that up for you guys to answer. Be sure to comment below if you think he'd be able to get that, or if he has to wait a bit longer. But with all that out of the way, we'll leave off here for now. So, what did you guys think about this short scenario? Do you think anything would have gone differently? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. Also, let's try and hit that like goal from the beginning of the video. It'll let me know that you guys want to see more videos like this. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future uploads on my channel, including more videos like this one. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.